Hello and welcome back everyone. Yeah. You got my face, you're not just focusing on my fat belly. No, you're good. You're you you better be making me look thin, okay? Because you know the camera adds ten pounds, so like that's <laughs> that's not even there, never mind that. So first I wanted to show you because <laughs> if you remember the bucket. We've had some good times on the bucket, but unfortunately I've gotten too fat and when I stand on a bucket, it's starting to break. And I had a stool with like hockey sticks on it and stuff, so I had this bucket and a stool and I decided, you know, to replace the two with one. So behold our new somewhat bucket stool and here it is. It's nice and tall so I can stand on it. But over here, I screwed the old stool so now it's, it still lives on. And I can sit on this thing sideways. I took another part of the stool and screwed it on here. And we're gonna put a little, like, I'm gonna add a little extra stool seat here so my friend can sit with me and join along. But that's not what this video is about. In today's video, we're gonna talk to you about how to, <laughs> how to touch a snake that's scared. So sometimes your snakes could be scared and not want you to touch them. And we're gonna touch them anyways and show you how to kind of like calm them down and let them know that everything's gonna be all right. Now, if you're if you're handling a snake, like you're touching. If you're handling a if you're touching a snake that doesn't want to be touched and that's that's a little bit scared, this is the time where it's very easy to get bit and stuff. And this snake is Nintendo. Nintendo is a sweetheart and he's just a bit of a scaredy cat and when he gets scared sometimes he used to splatter poop all over me and pee and stuff he's not as scared anymore uh, but he's still, when you first take him out, he is a little bit did I put him back? oh, I put it, he, he's here, he's in his home, he's not in his holding thing okay, so we're gonna look over here now, see, he likes to feel nice and safe in here, like he can go explore everywhere he's hiding a little like he's just to himself as soon as like you go to get him he's not cage defensive he's just defensive he's he's a bit of a scaredy cat he froze he's like <gasps> what's going on i always use a snake hook i probably could use my hand but i'd rather not risk it because like i said when you handle a snake that is scared it's very easy to get nipped so we kind of let him know we're gonna grab him and he Usually we'll start running away, but I, I just cleaned his home, so I moved him a bit, and he's okay. And he's in the shed too, so. It wasn't as exciting. He's not really trying to run away. But the biggest thing is that I'm staying calm. I'm not really worried. He's looking around and exploring. And with any snake, even snakes that are calm, Sometimes when you first take them out, they're a little bit like, uh oh, what's going on? I don't know what's gonna happen. And they, they might try and run away. So this room is full of things that they can grab. They can go wrap around here, can wrap around here, can get around a chair, can get around here. So I'm very aware of all those things and it's important to be aware of all those things because as soon as the snake wraps around something or grabs it, then it can be harder to get back. And like he'll be looking around like where can I get to what kind of trouble can I cause and the biggest thing is that you handle them you stay calm you don't even worry about it you almost pretend like it's like I'm not even holding a snake it's not even happening we're just not even doing this I'm trying to find a way to get away from me but I just hold him nicely we spend some time together we'll wait till he calms down because right now he, he's not really calm but we want him to be, so we just chill till he calms down, see how long it takes to calm him down. And then once they're a little bit more calm and relaxed and not like afraid and not fearful like now I'm near his head and stuff and he's not like doing the uh, leave me alone get away from me I don't like you now I guess he's like he knows we're out we're hanging out he's not as scared and nice and gentle uh, another big thing is whenever you're holding a snake especially longer ones and whatever 
you always want to kind of hold them from underneath. You always want to make them feel secure. Like you see, his back of his body is here, top of his body is here, me sitting, like he's sitting on me, he's hanging out. If I'm standing, he has to find a place where like he's kind of, the weight is on me and uh, then, then he'll feel safer, he'll feel more secure. And I'm not going from on top, and I'm not grabbing him from on top, because uh, that way it, it kind of feels like you're grabbing them. You, you want to hold them, you don't want to grab them. You want to hold them and, and make them feel secure and hold them from underneath. Not go from on top and like grab them or force them. You never want to force them, you always want to manipulate them. You want to be like, okay baby, come over here, everything's going to be okay. You just treat them nice, you treat them gentle, you're, you're good to them, you're calm, you're relaxed, then they relax, they calm down, and everything's just going to be okay. If you want to learn how to hold a big snake, watch the first video. Otherwise, check out the second video.